Hi everybody, welcome to Wildlife Drawing with Alicia Diane Arts. I'm Alicia and welcome. Thank you guys for showing up and for being a part of this channel, I guess, and this network of um, Cartoon Arts Center. It's been a really fun time hosting with you guys. I am going to be showing you guys some drawings that I did. I did them early. Let me make sure that the audio is on. First of all. Okay. So, it is on. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start with this recording that I have. And I'm going to play it. And we're just going to talk about it while we are doing it. So, this recording is from this morning, um, I started doing a warm up with some flamingos as usual. It's kind of like, I guess, I want to say it's my go to, but it's like, I think it's a comfort level for me too. Like, just going, it just reminds me of being at the zoo and drawing um, flamingos every day, which was what we would do every week. We would start off with the flamingos. So, it is really like, um, I don't know, it just gets me, I guess, in the mindset to do wildlife drawing. So anyway, today I wanted to talk about a couple of things, and um, one of the things I really wanted to talk about today was um, learning to draw, and this is a thing that I talk about pretty often, and just because there's so many people at different ages and stages of their life who are wanting to learn how to draw. And um, definitely learning to draw is not something that is just for kids or something that is just for teens or even early 20s. There are people in all levels of their um, career or, you know, starting their career or otherwise that are interested in learning how to draw. And um, I think that that because there's so many different ages or stages of life when people begin, there's this misconception of where you should be for your age level. And that's definitely not the case. I mean, it's the same thing with learning any other skill or any other craft or any other um, profession, basically. Um, if you're just learning how to dance, you're not gonna expect yourself to, you know, perform at, you know, at the feel harmonic. <laughs> oh, that's not a feel. That's music. But I'm saying, if you just learned a flute today, you're not gonna play at the feel harmonic next week. And if you just learned how to, if you just started ballet this week, you're not gonna be on stage with, you know, the, I don't know, the biggest New York, you know, dance company. It doesn't work that way. It's just the way I think everyone is kind of like thinks that's obvious or like if you just learned how to make spaghetti today you're not going to be working in like you know some fancy <laughs> Italian restaurant in you know in Milan next week it's the same thing with drawing it's the same thing with art it takes time it takes practice and it this kind of conversation is sparked to me by someone who was um who actually posted on Facebook. Hey, Facebook. But someone who actually posted on Facebook about learning how to draw, and they were kind of, um, I guess they weren't feeling so well because, well, they asked like, I don't want to get the question wrong, but I don't remember what exactly they said, but it's something along the lines of how can I, um, how can I learn to draw in a way that is, Dang, I'm <laughs> forgetting what they asked. I'm trying to like put it, I guess, into words. But like, how can they make it easier? It was something along the lines of how they can make it easier to learn to draw, or how they could make it less painful, or something like that. It was something along the lines of. It was clear in the question that learning to draw was not a fun process for them. And I have to say, if learning, if you're trying to learn how to draw and it's not a fun process for you, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> like, I know that might sound like, you know, stark or whatever, but 
it's true if, if you're learning how to draw and you're not enjoying it then first of all why do you want to draw <laughs> if it's painful for you and second of all like it shouldn't have, it shouldn't be especially in the early stages um, and I don't mean to be like to discourage anyone if you're, if you're really wanting to learn how to draw but it's, it's not clicking for you um, I think the biggest thing is you're probably trying to move too fast um, you're trying to do something that is beyond where you're at you might think well I'm you know 30 or 40 or even if you're 20 and you think oh I should be at this level how to draw I want to draw this drawing like you know whoever our insert artist name here and um, maybe you can't maybe you're just starting I mean everyone drew when they were a kid every like every person drew as a kid but from teenage years on if you stopped drawing and you just picked it back up again you can't expect to be a pro at it overnight it's just like any other skill set it's just like any other craft it takes time and effort and I would say is don't be too hard on yourself don't try to push yourself to learn how to do something that's like um, massive right away just the biggest thing um, I think you should try and just explore what interests you what is fun for you to draw like for me drawing animals was always like the thing I love to draw that's why we're doing it now that's why I started doing you know, wildlife drawing at the zoo um, a lot of my learning how to draw is due to animals I loved to draw them and I still do and I think I get the most joy from drawing when I draw animals still to this day I, I get the most joy from drawing when I'm drawing animals it's just a, it's just a fun thing for me but that might not be the case for you maybe you want to learn animals but maybe you don't have as much fun drawing animals so what is the thing that you enjoy drawing what's the thing that makes you smile or laugh and also to take into point is to what do you want to use your drawing for um, there's a lot of people who do comics even like professionally and semi-professionally that don't necessarily draw that well maybe they just have a kooky style that is relatable or they're good at storytelling maybe like your strength is not necessarily drawing as much as it is storytelling and you just want to get your idea across you know in drawing or maybe you just want to get the basics of drawing that could be a thing too so I would say you know that's okay like then really don't be hard on yourself you know when you're trying to like replicate the statue of David that's not <laughs> that's not what you're going for anyway so uh, not that you shouldn't learn anatomy but um, don't make yourself have to learn anatomy if you don't enjoy doing it or if you're that's not your goal but understand start at the starting point you need to start at the starting point don't start at the middle of the race and think that you know you're gonna run with like <laughs> all of the professional marathoners you know who've been running for the last 20 30 years uh, that's the thing I think if you are just starting out and you're comparing yourself to people who've been joined for 30 plus years that's really a disadvantage um, same like with like I said it's the same with anything else if somebody has been doing uh, working on a craft for a long time it's gonna take you a while um, even if you practice every day I mean the more you practice though that's the good thing the more you practice um, the faster you learn but more important than learning faster I think is in pacing it to a level that you enjoy because if you draw for 20 hours in one week and you're totally burnt out and you don't draw again it's better if you just drew for an hour a week for and you kept on doing it for over several years I mean it's it's still better than not doing it at all it's still better than not doing it at all especially if you're taking up if you're taking up drawing as a hobby don't feel like you have to do it even more than an hour a week if that's if it's a hobby for you then an hour a week is is good just make sure that you're consistent 
pick a time that is um, that you can stick to and um, you can commit to even if you're like I said even if it's a little or a lot you might be anywhere in between maybe you know pick something that's right for you and also make sure that you're balancing what you want to do with the art with how much time you spend doing it because um, that's going to make a difference. It's going to make a big difference in the end. Um, look at my sloth guy here. One thing I wanted to just really quickly point out in the drawing is like it can, when you're drawing from photographs, it can be a lot, a lot easier to um, to go ahead and put a frame around your drawing because rather than having um, this clearly um, very different ratio of a canvas like uh, like the size necessarily doesn't matter but the ratio is, is more of um, what I mean because if you have like this like I had here like this big long rectangular um, canvas and the photograph I was um, picking from is a much different ratio so I made this little frame and it just it just takes all of the guesswork out. I don't have to worry about filling in the blank space. I don't have to worry about making up extra trees or something to put in. I can just create this nice little frame to put my sloth in. And it works out just fine. It works out just fine for me. So, um, that's that. But I'm feeling cold to me tonight. So I'm going to get It's too early for air conditioning, if you ask me, but what do I know? I'm just a slaw. <laughs> but let's see, how else can I talk about learning how to draw? Start with the basics. So if you've never really drawn before, um, don't feel like, well, I'm too old to start from the beginning. Start from the beginning. <laughs> Have fun with like, mixing colors like you can even get like the little um, acrylic paint or like the there's another type of paint it's like acrylic it's even um, cheaper than acrylic it's um starts with a T I I think um, anyway they use it for for like children's classrooms you can just play around with mixing paint um, you can watch some, I mean, you might feel like, oh, this is like beneath me, but I'm telling you, it will make a difference if you just um, take, like, look at some videos online of like um, people teaching art to kids and just practice some of those things. I mean, it might sound silly, but if you're just starting out, it will be a huge help for me. Like. I didn't really have a lot of art classes. I've talked about this when I was in many times before. I didn't have a lot of art classes when I was in school. And when I started going to graduate school, I was I first started out going to graduate school um, studying art education, and I was doing like kindergarten art classes. I was actually learning how to teach art to kindergartners, and I was learning myself <laughs> because I had never taken those things. But it was helpful to me. It was helpful to like. Um, think about you know art in different ways. Think about the different um, texture, line, the different elements of art that I didn't even like know exist. I was applying those things, but I wasn't really aware of them um, intellectually. And just being able to understand that helped me. It definitely helped me a lot. I mean, I took color theory for the first time. Um, what was it like two years ago? And, you know, I'd already finished undergrad, but it didn't matter because I knew that I needed that. I knew that I needed that um, element. So don't be afraid to, like, start from the beginning or you end up, like, you know, trying to play catch up. And that's not going to be fun. And you're always going to be sort of frustrated with the art and frustrated with the drawing. And then you're, if you're frustrated with it, you'll quit. And that's what I'm trying to really ultimately is prevent happening for you. I don't want you to quit. I want you to find ways to use art in whatever way is like 
the most beneficial to you because learning new stuff is hard. <laughs> learning new stuff, we always like procrastinate, we always like put it off and you know, we do all kinds of things to not do the thing that we're trying to learn how to do because because we're not good at it yet and it's hard to face the fact that we're not good at it yet but if you're not you know practicing if you're not starting at the starting point and you just like expect yourself to be a master then you'll just quit and that's not good it's okay to be a beginner when you are a beginner <laughs> is what I'm really trying to say it's okay to be new when you are new you know and even if you've been doing it for a while it it's all about how much time you put in if you've been drawing for three years but you've only been drawing like 30 minutes a month or something like that or you've been like you just draw once every couple of months then you're still a beginner even though you've been doing it for years if you don't do it consistently and regularly you'll still be at a state stage for a much longer time. So try and make it a consistent habit if you actually want to see the growth. Um, if you keep your sketchbooks and actually keep sketchbooks and fill them up until like from beginning to end, <laughs> fill them up, you'll be able to see your progress, you know. But if you're not filling up sketchbooks, if you leave them half empty a lot, or you want to draw something but you never finish it. Um, that kind of, those kind of habits of not completing your drawings and things like that, or not completing your paintings. I've done that before, which I stopped doing because I just really don't like having half done stuff. It will leave you um, in a much better place if you're able to finish stuff but sometimes we need some motivation and I would say it really makes it harder when you don't have anyone to get some feedback off of like I've left a lot of stuff undone before I actually you know got motivated to um, finish it and I got motivated to finish it by getting someone to help me and I think that is a big key in this is getting someone to help you also I started um, taking continuing ed for experimental drawing um, a few years ago and that really inspired me a lot. It inspired me to like, hey, um, there's a lot I can do, there's a lot of different ways I can approach this. Maybe you need to just take a class. If it's something you're serious about, maybe it could be the jump start that you need. And like I said, don't be afraid to just take a beginner level class. If you're a beginner, there's no shame in that. Like, let's all start from the beginning and keep going forward with it. I mean, the world is there to start from the beginning. <laughs> Definitely, it's no good to start trying to start like someplace on the end or someplace that's like way further along than before. But anyway, I'm just gonna keep showing you guys this. I'm gonna see really quickly if I have any. some other um, images of my wildlife drawings to show you guys, but let's see. I was, I wanted to draw, I was thinking about this law for some reason last night, I think I was doing a study, and um, I ended up like, this something along the the, the, the idea of moving slow came up and that's when I was like, oh, sloth, and I just drew sloth and I was like, oh, I'm going to do some sloths for today and that's where that, that's where that came from. Let's see. Let's try and... Oh, I do have some. Okay. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I 
just wanted to check my stash. My stash of um, drawings to see what I had. God, if, this is like, I feel like it's hot in between being so hot and so cold all the time. I'm like either burning up or freezing every day. So that doesn't make it any more comfortable. But um, if you can see with this guy, I was doing like it's just like a rough pass with him first. Same with the sloth. I always do like this sort of a rough pass, and it just helps me to narrow down, um, narrow down exactly, you know his position, how I'm going to get like things going, um, the movement. Uh, if I was doing a longer pose, I might have made even more edits just to get him to exactly where I wanted him to be. Um, let's see. Did a little bit of color on this guy. recommend too just being really happy with your drawing before moving to color um geez there's so many different styles oh did you guys practice um what i was talking about last week just practicing like different styles of people i began doing that myself this week i was doing some some drawings um uh, from the Tangle book I have that I was showing you guys last week and I did some, let's see I did a couple of different places because I can't take the gold But anyway, um, just definitely making sure that you feel comfortable with your drawing before moving on to like adding the color and all of that. And don't worry about that, that's part of it. That is part of the video. And once I opened up my um, camera, that's just what happened here. It started getting a little bit slow or laggy, but Oh, well. let me see if I can pull up some of these. When I'm finished with this, um, with this guy, I'll show you guys what I did, and then we'll move on to a little bit more wildlife drawing if we get the chance to. <laughs> Let's see if this works out. Okay, I think that's it for my um, movie here, but I'm going to swap it out, and let's see, go back to my camera, there we go, okay, so I'm going to show you guys some of this that I did, I did a little bit of Team Rapunzel from Tango, on my iPad in Procreate and I did this other scene which was pretty cool so it was actually the cover of the Tangle Alt I'm going to do some more this week like I said I didn't do that many I mean I'm still working on my main project which is the comic but 
I still do a lot. Okay, so let's see what else I'll have. I'm gonna see if I have something here that I can share with you all. video here of drawing some lions which are among my favorite things to draw obviously <laughs> if you have known me for a while then you probably know that already Probably won't get to the whole thing, but we can at least get some some starting here with the lions. You know, like I feel like learning how to draw domestic animals and learning how to draw like wildlife animals can be such a different experience there's so um there's such complex little differences when you see them um it's just something to be aware of i guess because it's so easily to like definitely in the big cats and things like that it, it takes it takes an eye of, of like recognizing and separating the differences because they can be really really different um, this 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 slight little differences especially when we're doing um, no, I must be drawing this guy but just there's, there's so many ways that you can make a lion that looks like a like a dog <laughs> or you can make a, a, a pony that looks like a dog I, it's like one of the things that we used to joke about when I was in, in art school the first time was just the body types are just such these slight little differences between I guess it's the ratio of the torso and the legs or the difference between the torso and the legs that makes it such a big I guess difference because they can look so 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 different it's really something else It's, they feel like they look the same, but they're really, like, so very different. <laughs> so it's very easy, it's very, very easy to, um, draw, like, I don't know, it's like you think you're, you're drawing, like, this great, I don't know, you think you're drawing, like, this, this great, cat, this great giant cat that is a lion and then it ends up looking like like a dog and it's really just disappointing. There's a couple of things to learn um, when it comes to head shapes and torso and gosh, I don't know, just, just so many different things. There's a couple of different teachers online who will do like some different demonstrations for drawing the, the skeletons of these types of animals because they are so, you know, they do have these little unique things that make them so different than, than other animals. I would definitely recommend if you are, you know, have been drawing for a while and you really want to start drawing those type of animals and you can do something like that. Just learn how to do. types of skeletal structures. There's a couple of classes that you can take also. I don't know when I recorded this. When did I do this? I did this in 
But I haven't shown this online or on YouTube, so I wanted to show this. Um, line drawing demo. I was doing this project called A Thousand Lines for Kenya as a part of like a pre, I guess a pre-project to the what I'm doing right now. And I'd never <laughs> actually finished doing my thousand lines, but I do actually want to finish. Um, but I'm pretty close. I have about how many lines that I draw? I drew maybe I'm gonna say at least like 700 something lines. This video is a little bit older, but it still showcases a lot of some of the a lot of the same principles that I do now when I'm when I'm sketching, especially with the wildlife. Just getting that torso in and getting a nice rough loose drawing doesn't need to be or anywhere close to perfect. It's just about practicing figuring out your angles, understanding the what is it? anatomy. Yeah. I don't want to talk about some other things too while we're here. I'm freezing cold. My air conditioning up so high. you think would be exciting when you, an exciting thing to draw, is it caricature, is it wildlife, is it something else? I'm just thinking about that. Oh, look at the dad and son. That's really cute. Or dad and daughter. I can't tell. Another thing I wanted to talk about today with the um as far as the wildlife drawing is going, um not wildlife drawing, I'm sorry, as far as learning a new skill, like if drawing is your new skill that you're learning but it's you're having a hard time, you know, sticking to it or making it fun or whatever. Um, and like one of the things that's, that I'm kind of going through right now is with filmmaking because I'm trying to really learn um, some things in filmmaking, specifically live action. And I've never done that before. And it's hard and it's kind of scary because I've never ever done it. Um, I've only made a couple of, um, I've only made a couple of, of, of live action films. There's only been, I haven't, like, at least, <laughs> I've watched a little bit, um, I'm just grateful that I've done a couple, even though they were sort of, um, even though they're just, like, really amateur, like, short films, um, at least I feel like I've, I've worked a little bit on it, but I still feel totally new, like a baby. Like, like for you with drawing, if you've only done a little bit of, of drawing, like, you know, as everyone did when they were growing up, did like some kind of art or whatever. But um, that's how I feel. I feel like in the same position with someone who hasn't done it really since since they were a kid. Like they haven't really ever done anything 
serious with it and I have never really done anything serious with live action filmmaking and so learning about it now is a challenge for me but it is exciting and it's something that I feel passionate about but I'm scared a little bit so it's kind of a new venture for me and it's kind of like one of those eh, hopefully this works out okay sort of a thing but that's all I can say that's all I can say about that I'm just trying to like trying to continue with it but it is it is a bit challenging so we're in this together I'm doing um I'm doing this project that's actually called uh, How to Learn Filmmaking Fast Without Film School. It's by this YouTuber. His name is Darius Britt. You can follow him at Darius at D for Darius. Um, definitely not afraid to call out people who have been helpful to me. I've called out Aaron Blaze several times. Um, I call out um, Steven Silver. Um, I call out, I don't know, who else? This is really Jason Brubaker. I love him. He's really been helpful with um, comics for me, like making my first comic. Um, so whoever is a resource to me, I am more than happy to share that person with you. <laughs> uh, so let me think. Um, the 30 days of filmmaking is like, well, how to learn filmmaking fast is like, it's like 30 days of different, um, I guess mini assignments to do and I am just on day three right now and um, I'm just kind of really feel like I'm, I'm just what is it putting my toes on the water sort of a thing and just just like a baby starting out but I still feel pretty excited about it and I think today I'm going to be doing some some lights and um, lighting that's going to be pretty fun. I did do some... That's all else that I do. I don't know. I did composition and framing for my first two days. And now I'm going to be doing lighting and taking photos of a lighted subject. So, live action film is something that's brand new to me, but I'm pretty excited to at least be a part of turn down air conditioning yet, but I still, still would like to. So, this is my lion that I, yeah, it's, it's not really a great <laughs> drawing by any means, but that's the thing what I'm saying, it's like, it's, like you're not going to start out as a professional, this is me when I was just kind of earlier starting out with, um, uh, drawing lions and I did this video in 2016 the first video I showed you I did this morning this video now of the lions I did in 2016 in September of 2016 to be specific just finished the lighting course a few days ago um, the Aaron Blaze lighting course which I would recommend to you guys if you're interested I did a few inappropriate of the examples I don't know if I showed you guys just look sorry but this was just drawn following along with Aaron I did um doing the other lighting settings for this one. Let's not for this one, but I did another one with three different lighting scenarios. Let's see. So this is how the line looks just plain with flat color. And this is how the line looks with the first set of lighting. Nice, huh? And this is how the line looks with the 
second set of lighting where he's like backlit under a tree and this is how the line looks with the third set of lighting where like his front end is in the shadow oops it's kind of cool though like just practicing different types of lighting it was really helpful to me I felt Light and shadow. I don't know why this layer is hidden for some reason. I can barely remember drawing this guy. I don't know if. No. I would draw live, but I can't. It's it lives too much, but I will have. If you guys have any specific animals that you would like um, to draw or to caricature, please, please let me know in the comments. I will be able to do it if you give me a heads up. I do one week of figurative wildlife drawing and one week of cartoony, so it goes like circular like that. Next week we'll be cartooning animals so you guys can come back in. Let me know, but if you have a preference of either, for either, let me know what type of animal and whether, let me know if you want to see it, um, if you want to see it as figurative or cartooned. So please let me know in the comments, guys. I will be very grateful for you. But if you can see, I'm going to keep going through this, you can see that it's like I'm going over this as like just piecing it together, piece by piece, just like figuring it out. Even um, four years ago almost, I was still like using a lot of the same methods that I would be using now, um, just trying to try and get that body in and piece things together little by little figuring out where things go so even like you know I can see now like my eye I can like I know that my eye has grown because I can see differences now in the way that I would approach it, that way that I would approach the same drawing. But a lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the initial way that I'm doing it is the same. Like I just see that, that there are differences in the way that I approach things then and the way that I would approach it right now. And this is on Pinterest. I'm finding these now. The first ones were on Google, and these are that's a beautiful picture, by the way. That is gorgeous. I wonder if I can find that on Pinterest now. I don't know if I see that. That's so beautiful. Look at the baby zero. Oh my gosh. Oh no. <laughs> I remember this drawing. It doesn't turn out very well. <laughs> Everyone makes mistakes, guys, and I do not. I should have picked that orange one. That was much more nice photo. But I remember the result of this photo, and it's not great. <laughs> so you can watch the disaster as it goes along. I'm trying to find it, see if that other. If I can find it, that would be great. I mean, first, I definitely think I should have given myself more space on the canvas to draw this guy like how I did with the with the um 
what they call the slot, like framing, framing my canvas first so I wouldn't have to feel like, because there's such a difference between um, the image and the canvas that I'm working on. So, you this photo didn't come out well. <laughs> I, I could see so many differences now, like the head is like way too big and angled wrong. But well, at least I learned some things since then. A few things, nothing else. trying to find that one photo that I was trying to draw before but I can't find it apparently Yeah, I think I'm just gonna let this one go. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, this one is not really my best of <laughs> works. <laughs> but you guys, uh, you guys can see what I'm talking about anyway. And I hope that you guys got some stuff from this video. Disappeared on me. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> I tried to find it. Well, this doesn't get any better, so I'm sorry that <laughs> this photo isn't really the greatest. Maybe I should finish showing you guys. But I don't know. <laughs> Slightly painful to watch. For me, anyway. Just seeing, like, my old John that isn't the best. getting better at least I'm like figuring I mean even at this stage which was even a few years ago I can still like appreciate you know let's let's try and find a positive I'm trying to I'm trying to be more of and I was just talking about you know starting at different levels and I don't want you to hate like your levels that you go through and I don't want to you know hate my own levels that I go through so this was this was you know part of the learning even you know that I've been drawing for years, it's still a part of that um, learning, especially when you do a daring sort of a pose like this. This is definitely not an easy pose to draw by any means. It's an awkward pose to begin with, but I can still see and appreciate like um, the learning that's going involved, like the, the problem solving that's happening here. I'm doing a lot of the rhythm that's what's called for figuring out the anatomy of um, 
of a, a person or a living animal that has muscular structure. So I'm doing, um, figuring out the rhythm, the motion that it's going in, the direction of the, the muscles is, I guess, a better way to put that. So I can, I mean, I'm glad that I'm still, like, showing you guys, even though, like, I felt at first a little bit embarrassed, because, you know, because I can see more, of, I'm at a, but that's a good thing. If you can see where your mistakes are, that's called progress. That means that you're doing, that you're making progress. If I was still not seeing in the same way now as I was then, um, that would be, that wouldn't be as helpful. And this is all underdrawing. This would be what I would use as an underdrawing, you know, to get to a more finished drawing. But having mistakes in an underdrawing is fine. It's all about figuring out, you know, what's happening, figuring out where things are going. It's not about getting it perfect the right time. That could be another mistake you're making, especially if you're just starting out, is trying to get it at the right um, all right the first time without doing an underdrawing. Underdrawing allows you to do what I did just, just there, which is erase, um, reconfigure things, find out the proper placement if things aren't placed where they need to be, redoing things. All of that is okay in underdrawing. And it's, you know, okay to make lots of mistakes if that's what it takes to get to that final end result. And I don't, I don't believe really in throwing away drawings. Um, it's very, very rare that I would toss a drawing. I don't think that it's helpful. I don't think that it, it's um, useful and definitely not advised for me. The best way I think is to try and understand your drawing, try and understand what went wrong, try and manipulate it if you can to get it to where you want it to be. I mean, if everything has fail for some reason, at least figure out first why and where it failed. I don't believe in leaving a drawing feeling confused. I think that that's the worst place to be when you leave a drawing, is leaving it feeling confused and not knowing where you messed up, just knowing that it doesn't look right or it doesn't look like how you want it to look. The best thing to do is to understand it and then you can, especially if you're working digitally, um, I would be able to go ahead and take my lasso tool, what, what I would do right now is take the lasso tool and wrap it around his head and the mane there and I would rotate it um, to the left to get that angle that he's doing in the photograph and make it a lot smaller because the proportion is, is much bigger than it needs to be. So I would do that and it's really, it, the drawing is really not that bad. Now, like, now that I've done the, the work and figuring out, the only thing that like I said, that I would really um, fix right away is figuring out that head, um, grabbing it, rotating it, and making it smaller, and bringing it down a bit. Like I would bring that head, let's see, I can't even, I don't think you can see, no, you can't see my finger. <laughs> I thought maybe you could see my finger. Can you see the, the pointer at least? Can you? Oh yeah. I would take this head and just bring it down more, rotate it on the angle, and I, then I'll be able to change, change the opacity on this. So I'm trying to teach you guys how to also fix a drawing that you messed up on. Like it's always a, or under drawing. It, don't ever consider your your first drawing to be your your last drawing. You know, unless you, you have like this great you know initial drawing, which doesn't always happen. It usually doesn't happen. Um, consider your underdrawing, then you can just take that 
and and alter it so you can put, you know you have a look at it you you have another look at it especially if you want it to be a final finished piece and then you can go ahead and manipulate it and get it to be you know change it and tweak it how you want it to be so then you can you know do another drawing on top of it whether it's in Photoshop taking the opacity and adding a new layer or if it's a physical drawing on a paper that you can just put over a light disc apply another piece of paper and draw over so those are different ways that you can do it, it doesn't have to be that your first drawing is your final drawing so now that I'm looking at this now I'm glad I didn't stop it because I actually see a lot of positives in this and I actually see a lot of the good positive things that I did here and how I could manipulate it to be a finished um, really nice drawing at the end so I'm not mad at that drawing at all anymore <laughs> even though it was a few minutes ago just um, watching it initially but now I can really see there's a lot of um, thought uh, behind the drawing and a lot of thought that I was doing even even a few years ago so I can really really appreciate that so with that being said I want to thank you guys so much for joining me during this time I want to thank you guys so much for being a part of Wildlife Drawing with Alicia Diane. And I hope that you guys have got some things and some useful tips from this video. And um, if you did, please like and share. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Alicia Diane or Alicia Diane Art. I think either one will get you there. And yeah, always come back. I'll be back here next Monday with some more Wildlife Drawing. And until then, um, what do I always say? <laughs> um, be grateful, live balanced, and most importantly, be yourself. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.